Fahrenheit to minus freezing only a few ways inland. Some parts of the desert only manage to get around 2 mm of precipitation during the whole year. Inland, this makes the Namib the sole genuine desert in southern Africa and also makes it one of the least habitable places on Earth. It persists here in this little area along the Namibian coastline for a number of reasons. The southeasterly trade winds typically blow across the region from the Indian Ocean, but they must first cross the high slopes of the Drakensberg Mountains here, where they lose a lot of their moisture to the mountain's eastern slope. The winds will then blow across Africa's greatest escarpment, and by the time they reach the Namib, the winds are largely hot and dry. These hot and dry winds then clash with the cold ocean current in the area, causing the region to become extremely dry. The Namib coastline is one of the most hazardous places in the world for sailors to travel along because of the Namib Desert's reputation as one of the world's foggiest regions. The coast here typically experiences more than 180 days a year of dense fog conditions, making it one of the most dangerous places in the world for travelers. For ages, ships that become lost or confused in the fog have been crashing and wrecking themselves here almost since time immemorial, and it's estimated that there have the Namibian coastline is frequently referred to by its other well-known name, the Skeleton Coast, due to the hundreds of rusting and rotting holes scattered across the coast. However, it's not just the fog that makes the Skeleton Cove such a dangerous hazard to sail across, for the most part, there aren't any human settlements nearby to where a lot of the shipwrecks occur, so the search and rescue operations have always been logistically challenging. The other issue with Namibia's coastline is that there aren't many natural harbors to choose from when deciding where to build a port. For the most part, the entire coast is smooth and exposed to the South Atlantic, which makes it difficult to find a place to park your ships. The only two exceptions are at Luteritz and Walvis Bay which are located along more than 2,000 kilometers of otherwise open coastline. The only two rivers that occasionally manage to reach the ocean through the Namib Desert are the Omar Uru and, more importantly, the SWA Cop, which occasionally flows just to the north of Windhoek and Walvis Bay. However, the problem with both of these rivers is that their flows are irregular throughout the year, making it nearly impossible for them to reach the ocean. Only about 1% of Namibia's landmass is actually considered arable and suitable for farming as a result of this. The only river that is technically in Namibia that manages to flow to the ocean all year round continuously is the Orange River, which forms Namibia's southern border with South Africa. However, the Orange River's main issue is that it is only 33 kilometers long. The Namib Desert is one of the world's least populated and remote regions because Namibia is likely to be almost entirely landlocked in practice. However, the fascinating things that have drawn people to it for the past 150 years regardless are that it also happens to be one of the most resource-rich regions on the planet. It all started in 1866 when a farmer discovered a diamond on his farm nearby at the base of the Namib Mountain. The Nama and Herero were among the many indigenous tribes that were slaughtered by the German colonists in Namibia between 1904 and 1908, after they had spent years fighting them and years looking for diamonds there. It was discovered in 1908, however, that the Germans had been correct about their diamond hunch in the territory all along the Namib Desert was absolutely loaded with diamonds, but not in the way that people thought they weren't found underground like they were in Kimber. Events that the modern German government would eventually formally recognize as a genocide more than a century later in 2021 and for which Germany agreed to pay more than 1 billion euros in reparations the diamonds most likely all came from the high plateau of central South Africa, hundreds of kilometers to the east. However, over tens of millions of years of geologic time, these diamonds would gradually trickle into the Orange River and flow down into the Atlantic Ocean where the Bangela Current would take them up and deposit them all along the coast of the Namib Desert or on the shallow ocean floor next to it. Right before World War I started, the Germans gradually understood everything and turned Namibia into their premier diamond-producing colony. This was followed by a South African invasion and occupation, which lasted for the next 75 years. Namibia would finally gain full independence in 1990. It was relatively simple for the South Africans to occupy and control Namibia because, for all the geographical reasons I mentioned, there had never been many people there. By 1990, Namibia had a population of only about 1.4 million, 
compared to the 37 million white South Africans who ruled and dominated the country throughout the apartheid era and are still in power today. Colossal nation in Southwest Africa, one of the most fascinating regions on Earth, bigger than Texas. Take a look at this global map of human population density and pay close attention to Africa where there is a big empty void of people across the entire southwest corner of the continent. Namibia makes up the majority of that void, there are only about two and a half million people there. Despite being almost entirely devoid of people, it is completely empty. Namibia is now, on average, the second least densely populated country in the world, with only about 3 people per square kilometer of land. This is less than either Australia or Canada, and it is only just slightly more densely populated than Mongolia, which is the least densely populated country in the world. However, the Namibian population pattern just gets weirder and weirder the more you look at it and consider it. Mongolia is sparsely populated because it is entirely landlocked in the middle of Asia between the hostile tundra of Siberia and the hostile sands of the Gobi Desert, however, Namibia is not landlocked and actually has the 10th longest coastline on the entire African continent. In nearly every country with a coastline, the majority of its populations live near the coasts for generations. Nearly everywhere you look on this map of where people actually live, you see the same pattern of people living nearby to a coastline from South America to Europe across Asia and in Australia, with very few exceptions. The coast of Namibia, which is almost completely abandoned in southwestern Africa, may be the biggest anomaly of them all. Strangely, Namibia's coastline is actually the most sparsely populated area of the country, and the majority of the few Namibians who do exist reside hundreds of kilometers away from it in the interior. Only about half of Namibia's small population lives in this landlocked region up here in the north, directly across the Angolan border. However, the country's capital and largest city, Windhoek, is this tiny dot of highland. Everywhere else in Namibia, especially along the coastline, which is the most remote part of Namibia and one of the most remote places in the entire world, is such as scattered remote towns, rural communities, or literally nothingness for hundreds of kilometers. Wick is a big modern city with nearly 500,000 residents, or about one in five Namibians, but it's also the only actual city in the country. The many fascinating reasons why this is the case are fascinating. The Namib Desert, from which the country of Namibia derives its name, completely dominates the Namibian coastline. It stretches across the entire coastline for more than 2,000 kilometers from southern Angola to northwestern South Africa. It is unknown how long this desert has existed here, but some estimates suggest that it has existed since at least the time when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Erratic temperature changes temperatures may vary from a steady 48 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit by the coast to 113 degrees. As of 2021, Namibia is still the eighth largest producer of diamonds in the world by volume of carrots and the sixth largest producer of diamonds by revenue, considering that most of Namibia's population was at the time. Millions of carats worth of diamonds were exported from the country abroad throughout Namibia's history of colonial rule plucked from the beaches near the coast or dredged up from the ocean floor next to it. The De Beers Corporation, the main organization working with the Namibian government in the diamond industry today, recently announced the addition of a new ship to their fleet in March 2022. Called the Bangela Gem after the same Bangela current that spread millions of diamonds along the Namibian coast, this ship is the largest undersea diamond recovery vessel in the world. It cost $420 million to build. After its introduction in Namibia, the ship will be used to recover diamonds from the ocean floor. Since uranium is the fuel used to power nuclear plants in China and France for decades, Namibia is currently the second largest producer of uranium in the world, and uranium is by far the country's top export, going primarily to China and to a lesser extent, France. This uranium's presence has also helped the Namib Desert gain more prominence on the global stage than it had previously thought possible. Shell and the French energy giant Total both conducted exploration missions for years without finding significant volumes until suddenly in February 2022, just before the Russians invaded Ukraine, they made the discovery of a lifetime in an area known as the Orange Basin with a Namibian company. 
This discovery was a 21st century counterpart to the diamond hunch held by the Germans back in the 19th century. Nigeria Shell Total and Namibia have both stated intentions to start producing oil within four years, by 2026, on par with reserves discovered in neighboring Angola, whose own output is virtually similar to Africa's leading oil producer. It may be extremely terrible news for nations like Russia, which has been trying to hold the European Union hostage by cutting off its own energy supply, if their production levels can get to close to the 1.2 million barrels per day that Angola presently achieves. Namibian oil has the potential to be so abundant that it might wind up replacing more than half of the total oil supply that Russia was selling to the European Union and it all simply suddenly was added to the known supply in the globe. As a consequence, Namibia and other oil-rich African nations like Angola may be asked to join OPEC. Equitable Guinea and Nigeria with its long history of being exploited by foreign colonizers up until the 1990s, Namibia is already ranked as the second most unequal country on the planet only behind its even more unequal neighbor, Nigeria. Government officials in Namibia have predicted that this once-in-a-lifetime oil and gas discovery could end up doubling the entire country's GDP by as soon as 2040 and create a ton of high-paying jobs for Namibians. However, it is not without controversy. Southern Africa Only approximately 10% of initiatives using the country's abundant natural resources are directly owned by the Namibian government. Despite making up just around 5% of the nation's population, white Namibia continues to hold on to almost 70% of the country's very scarce wealth. Farmland Indiana Many ways, Namibia is still a country dominated and exploited by colonialism, and there are legitimate concerns that the massive oil and gas discoveries made last year by European energy companies could only end up further exacerbating those trends. Regardless of how it plays out, Namibia and its small, dispersed population will remain without the benefits of colonialism. Only about four five hundred people in Namibia who are descended from European colonists own nearly half of the land in the country. I've been using HelloFresh for more than two years and frequently order some of my all-time favorites like this amazing buffalo spice chicken. All in all, HelloFresh is just a better way to eat and it's often cheaper too, especially since you can see a light out GST HelloFresh is just a better way to eat and it's often cheaper too, especially since you can see a light out GST HelloFresh is just a better way to eat and it's often cheaper too. It's a wonderful approach to support real life. For 21 free meals and free delivery, visit HelloFresh.com and use the code REALLIFE or 21. Lauren eats well, too. And as usual, I appreciate you watching.